Happy 2026. This is your weekly cybersecurity review. I'm Allie Diamond, and this is ThreatWire. California continues to push the boundaries for the rights to digital privacy. In 2024, California created the Delete Act, which required data brokers to provide copies of all data they have pertaining to a California resident request and delete if it's requested. On January 1st, 2026, California put the DROP law into effect. In the terms of this law, DROP stands for Delete Request and Opt Out Platform. This platform allows residents of California to use a government official website to submit a universal request for their data to be deleted by data brokers and no longer be collected by those brokers. After August 2026, brokers will only have 45 days to act after receiving the notice for deletion. The issue with the original Delete Act was that it was severely underutilized due to the barrier of entry. Researchers found that within only one year of going into action, the Delete Act was only used by 1% of residents. This was due to it being so demanding to have to submit individual requests to every possible broker. Writer for Ars Technica, Dan Gooden, used the service and covered it in his article on this topic. I wanted to call out his realization. It initially felt counterintuitive to provide such a wealth of personal information to ensure that data is no longer tracked. As I thought about it more, I realized that all of that data is already compromised as it sits in online databases, which are often easily hacked and, of course, readily available for sale. What's more, Cal Privacy promises to use the data solely for data deletion. Under the circumstances, enrolling was a no-brainer. You do need to prove that you're a California resident to be able to use the service. If you are watching this as a California resident, will you be using the service? Did you even know about this? Let me know in the comments. N8N is an open source workflow automation tool that allows users to quickly set up automated actions between disparate data sources and technologies with high flexibility and the ability to integrate custom code. The product and subsequent company exploded onto the dev and DevOps scene in 2025 due to their focus in AI and AI automation. But the company didn't end up having an easy Christmas or start of 2026. Within a two week period, four different critical severity CVEs have been announced regarding the N8N product. Three of the four vulnerabilities do require some form of authentication. Starting back on December 22, 2025, CVE 2025-68613 was announced with the CVSS score of 9.9. .9. It stems from poor isolation of the N8N process from the underlying runtime. Once an attacker gains authenticated access to an instance with the permissions to create or edit workflows, attackers can execute arbitrary code. Attackers use a well-formed expression to inject a malicious payload into the N8N expression evaluation engine, which will get executed without any validation of the appropriate scope. This allows the attacker to run code arbitrarily with the permissions of the N8N process. CVE 2025-68668 was awarded a CVSS score of 9.9 .9 and is being dubbed N8scape. This one is similar to CVSS 2025-68613 due to the fact that RCE is possible due to poor isolation. But instead of escaping code, it's based around the use of Pyodide to allow native Python and abusing the JavaScript Python interoperability. The native Python runtime for their task runners fail to remove the functionality of certain functions that can be used to invoke system calls directly. The two function it fails to block are C types and Pyodide eval code. CVE 2026-21877 was awarded a perfect 10 CVSS score. The CVE also revolves around authenticated attackers being able to use arbitrary write conditions to cause N8N to execute untrusted code. The final CVE, CVE 2026-21858, has another CVSS score of 10 and is being called Night Nightmare, Nightmare, I believe. This CVE doesn't require authentication, unlike the previously found three CVEs. The function that is activated by a workflow webhook fails to handle files and read bodies correctly. The body of the file handling function can be overwritten 
due to failure to verify the contact type of a webhook call. This allows the reading of local files. Through escalation, an attacker can achieve remote code execution. Basically, the solution right now, update your N8N instances frequently and often. Four CVEs to cover in one story is definitely a lot, but I tried my best to summarize them all. Does anyone else agree it is way too early in the year for this many CVEs with this high of scores? An amazing CCC talk from 2025 is gaining viral traction. If you didn't see it, let's go over it. CCC, or Chaos Communication Congress, takes place annually in Germany. This year, they accepted a talk by an anonymous hacker going by the name Martha Root. During their talk, while they were dressed up as the Pink Power Ranger, Martha Root recounted how they were able to infiltrate three white supremacy dedicated dating sites, exfiltrate data about the users, and gain control of the websites. They were also able to identify who and where the person who created and ran these three websites were. Their talk ended in a standing ovation as in real time, Martha ran a script that took all of the websites offline, deleted their user databases, owner emails, and more. With the data Martha Root collected, they created a website that shared user profiles, locations, photos, and more, as well as shared information to a nonprofit called DDoS Secrets for archiving. The creator of the websites did release a statement that they were going to pursue repercussions, calling the actions Martha did as, quote, cyber terrorism. Imagine running an open source project with no vulnerabilities for over a decade, only to be the one to find its first CVE. This is exactly what happened to Libsodium. Libsodium is a highly trusted, well-regarded encryption library recommended for its minimal configuration and simple API. It has been around for 13 years and on December 30th, 2025, announced its first CVE. The bug in question was found by the creator of the library while comparing implementations of the library in ZIG and in C. The CVE, CVE 2025-69277, was given a base CVSS score of 4.5 by MITRE. The CVE stems from a missing check in the function revolving around checking validity of an elliptic curve point. Points that were supposed to fail were sometimes being accepted into the original C implementation. The error was specifically in the implementation of point checking using the Edwards 25519 elliptic curve. The function was missing a subtraction and an is zero check. Subsequently, the creator recommends moving away from the Edwards 25519 curve and instead use the Ristretto 255 group, which doesn't require any additional point checks and is faster. The fix has been implemented as well as recommendations for alternative workarounds if you're unable to update the Libsodium library. If you enjoyed this episode and want to support the show, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. I know that since I've started, the Patreon has been a bit dead, so I'm aiming over the next few months to bring it back to life. And there's just a lot to balance, as you can imagine. So let me know if there's anything you want to see coming from the Patreon in the near future. I hope everyone has had an amazing start to 2026. I started my job and it's been such a great experience. As I said, I'm writing Golang and am working full time as a backend engineer. What were some of your goals for 2026? Let me know in the comments and we can have a discussion. Is there anything that I can do with Hack5 to help support your goals? One of my goals for 2026 is to get this channel to 1 million subscribers, so you may see some small tweaks and changes happening to Threatwire over the next few months as we work to make this show even more exciting and more engaging for you. Another goal of mine is to continue to grow my own personal social media channels. So if you're not following me over on my Instagram account, I'm at ending with Ali on everything. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs>